Yet another policeman has lost his life on duty. Crime fighter Ian Cameron of the Democratic Alliance is here with Biz News to tell us more about it. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Chris. Um, Chris, I, 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 yeah, I, I think it's sorry. I'm, I'm sort of falling, falling into it straight away. But I want to highlight before you even ask a question that um, it we must realize how much cops in South Africa offer us when they put their lives at risk. And by this, I'm not saying I know the police is in a very bad state, but I don't think we realize the risk that some good ground level cops take because they have very broken leadership. But despite that, and despite the poor resourcing that put on that uniform every day, and a large majority of them are still willing to offer their lives for us at any given moment. And um, yeah, I think we must honor them for that. Now, tell us what happened uh, in the latest case, Ian. Uh, were there operational issues? Yesterday, Sergeant Mahoney from uh, the Mamre area, uh, very close to Atlantis in the Western Cape, was shot and killed with his own service pistol after they'd responded to a domestic complaint. So Sergeant Mahoney has been in the South African Police Service for over 20 years, and him and his partner uh, responded to this call. When they got there, uh, he asked his partner, and this is all allegedly at the moment, I don't have every single fact, so please excuse if there, there might be a small technical uh, difference, but uh, generally speaking, the story is as follows from from the members, the police members that attended the scene, is that um, he, he told his partner to wait outside the bedroom window in case the suspect tries to jump out from there, and he locked the room and he left, the, or he closed the door with the suspect inside as he then called for support and backup. The suspect seemed to be high on some kind of a drug, probably took, I guess, and uh, the suspect managed to get out of the room. There was then an altercation between him and uh, Sergeant Mahoney, um, and this is where, the, where the, the horrible conditions that SAP's member, members work in starts. So the... The suspect grabbed Mahoney's gun. I don't know what the circumstances were at that stage, you know, um, how they were standing or how they approached each other or how the suspect approached the sergeant. The point is he grabbed the gun and the retention cord from the state-issued holster broke. So, and we found this out uh, when we, when after the suspect was shot and killed this morning by police, the gun that he had with him that was Sergeant Mahoney's service pistol still had the retention cord on the gun. So it slapped off. So issue number one, again, is poor resourcing. They don't even get quality boots. So something like a retention cord is something that could potentially be the difference between someone dying and not dying. And obviously, I can't say that with regards to this case because I don't know every detail, but what if it could have made a difference? So the retention cord broke. If we take it a little bit further, um, you know, when the helicopter reacted from the air wing, the helicopter didn't have radios in order to communicate with police on the ground, so they couldn't communicate with each other. The police drones took over four hours to actually arrive on scene. So the surge started, I think, between 12 and 1 p.m., and only late afternoon did the did the uh, did the drones arrive that could be used to assist in the search where the suspect had ran into the bushes. Um, you know the the SAPS members that were searching the station members don't even have torches. The torches that are issued to them by the South African Police Service are, are such poor quality that most of them break um, quite quickly, and or they just. Yeah, they just don't function. So the majority of them don't even have working torches, and when they do ask for more, they don't get. There was no joint operations center. Um, now, there's a 72-hour rule for a, for a wanted suspect, especially such a dangerous and armed suspect, that there's a 70-hour rule that there must be an operational plan. There was no operational plan either. Um, the incident commander, from what I'm told, didn't necessarily have the relevant experience, but I can't uh, comment directly on that. But the fact that there was no joint operation center and that there was no proper radio communication between air support and the, the people on the ground tells me that there's something seriously wrong. The incident commander then told the um, tactical response team that had reacted, TRT, 
and public water policing that came all the way from Bonnyvale and other SAPS members that they need to go home uh, because there are too many people. And so they were left with about 20 members that had to continue to search. Now, in an operation like that, you use every single resource effectively. It doesn't help that you've got hundreds of people that are trampling a scene. I understand that. But I can't see how you would take these more specialized units and send them away. I mean, it's extra vehicles, extra manpower. Um, It just gives them way more capacity. So that doesn't make sense to me either. Um, I, I think that gives you kind of an an overview but this is the reality that so many cops face is exactly this incident that happened there and I think many people take good people like Sergeant Mahoney for granted because um, we kind of uh, follow the narrative that all police are bad or that all police don't do their jobs and it's simply not true I'm the first one to call out the police for not doing their job people know that but I can tell you and I vouch for thousands of them I've got hundreds if not more cops that speak to me well I can't speak to a hundred a day but hundreds that that contact me that speak with me that ask for help um, that share information and I can tell you that they are people with remarkable and impeccable integrity um, and my heart bleeds for for the wife uh, and the family of Sergeant Mahoney today because when I spoke to some of the colleagues earlier today I could hear that they are absolutely heartbroken and if we look at Constable Ashwin Pedro that was killed last year in the Cape Flats in Grassy Park, same thing, same kind of situation, um, uh, also shot with his own service pistol. So we need to, I guess, question training as well. But in this specific regard, um, if this was an experienced officer, um, so we don't know all the circumstances. All I can say is that we need to cherish the good cops out there because there are many. And we should never, ever take them for granted. Well, with such horrific working conditions, is it any wonder so many South African policemen are dying on duty? Just run the statistics by us, Ian, please. Yeah, so I think to give you an idea, if we go on the average from 2023, I mean, the last seven months or the first seven months of the new financial year in 2023, so it started in April, about 70 police officers had been killed. Um, before December, so up until the end of November. So that, if you look at that number, you can go on about 10 cops per month that are killed. It's horrific circumstances to work in. And remember, we then look at, what, 30,000, 30, 31,000 murders per year. Now, if you go look at the police and, and uh, uh, you know public ratio, it's severely skewed. We've got a huge shortage of cops. We've got a huge shortage of investigative capacity. So so they are completely, completely overstretched in what they what they do. Um, if we look at, again, 2023 is a good example of an entire year, but just for a three-month period between July and September, a total of 35 cops were killed. So that's over 10 per month. And, um, you know, yeah, it just, I, I almost get emotional about it. I... Uh, it it really it really bothers me that we've got ministers and certain politicians getting unfair protection while people on the ground have nothing, and while the cops that are meant to and that are sent into communities that really face serious, dangerous situations aren't resourced the way they should be. So, um, yeah, I I just want to want to call on people to do what you can to support your local police. Um, I understand that there's a lot of, of trouble in the police and that it is very broken, but I always encourage people on a cold winter's night, if you can, take a few cups of soup and to a night shift and just say thank you to them. Um, you know, check in every now and then to a charge office once a month and take them a cold bottle of cool drink uh, to the cops in the charge office. But but be there for your cops and and see what you can do to make their ride a little bit smoother. Because I can tell you one thing, one of the biggest inspirations that I have for people that give me hope is members in the South African police. It is the members that, that carry on to hang in there. I always say this to my wife. I say to her, if they are able to still hang in there, then I've got, I don't have much to complain about. If they are able to carry on and if they still have the integrity that they have, then certainly I can push a little bit harder and still carry on doing what I do. So um, I think we need to salute them and we need to honour them. Thank you. That was Ian Cameron, crime fighter and member of the Democratic Alliance, speaking to Biz News about the tragic death of yet another policeman on duty. 
Thank you, Ian. I'm Christine.